Amen. Uh, I just want to greet you all listening right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who reigned. Our reading is going to take place in the book of Revelation chapter 21. This word right now you are going to hear, you are about to hear, will bless your soul forever and ever. There's always a revelation in the word of God when you are reading it. So I want you to follow with me. In Revelation 21, I want you to give heed to this message. It's very important. Amen. This is your brother in Christ speaking to you right now, encouraging you to uh, work out your salvation with trembling and fear. If you are in the church and they are not teaching you the word of God, how to stay strong, how to avoid sin, how to avoid self. If that church only is um, promoting self-exaltation, prosperity, money, get out of that church. You're looking for a church where Jesus says, unless we deny ourselves and carry our cross, we will not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. We are not worthy of him if we love somebody else more than him. So the world teaches to love yourself, but God teaches us in his word to deny ourselves and to love him. Because if you don't love God, you cannot love yourself. You don't know what loving yourself is. So we're going to go to the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. We're going to start off. You're looking at it right now. Please. Whenever you're reading the word of God, do not rush just to read the word. But try to more absorb in what you are reading. Do you understand what I'm saying? Try to absorb. And the word of God is like a sword. It's like a fire. It's like a, an axe. It's like a hammer. When the word of God comes against somebody, it comes to break every sins out of our lives. If your heart is like like a brick, the word of God comes to break that brick with the hammer. So it turns into whatever your situation is. If you have a spirit of lust, you have a lot of bad associations and bad friends. The word of God comes into like a sword to sever ties, to cut you away from your family, from your friends that are like bad influences in your life. So the word of God is not just a book that you read just to satisfy yourself to get rich it has everything in it it will sustain your life around every situation in your life whatever areas in your life that you need to be fulfilled the word of god can do it because the word of god is god himself so if you despise and reject the word of god you are re rejecting and despising god that's why Jesus says that very word that I speak to you or that I have spoken unto you will judge you in the day of judgment. So God's word do not go and come back void unto him. Every word of God that you hear or heard will come back as a judgment against you if you do not obey it. Understand? So reading this word here, make sure you take notes, make sure you pay attention you give heed and hearken into the word of God and to apply it in your life. All right, I'm going to start with Revelation chapter 21 verse 7 says what? He that overcome. He that overcome. Now look at the first word. Don't just run and be like, he that overcome shall inherit all things and I will be his guide and shall be my son. Don't read the word of God like that. You miss out a lot of stuff. Look at the first three words. He that overcome. Are you an overcomer? Okay, always look at the word as you speak in the word is speaking to yourself. So if you're not an overcomer, you pray to God and say, Lord, make me become an overcomer. Give me the strength. Give me the courage. Make me strong like a bow so I can be an overcomer. Now, when this is overcomer, overcomer of what? You see, the first thing that caused uh, our, our world to fall into chaos is what? Sin. When Adam and Eve sin against God. God told them not to eat the forbidden fruit. What did the devil do? The devil tempted them so that they can disobey the word of God. 
So they didn't overcome the devil, they didn't overcome the temptation, they didn't overcome their desires, but they give in. Okay, so this is the first word. So now, since Adam and Eve gave in, God is trying to tell us not to give in, but to be to overcome what is trying to tempt us in our lives. So he said, he that overcome. So not only you need to believe in God, but you also need to be an overcomer. Okay, I hope I'm teaching right now. I hope you are getting this. He said, he that overcome. So this is the first word we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop right there. So when he says he that overcome, then he tells you that person, that lady, that man, that woman, that elder, he that overcome, if he overcomes or if he is an overcomer, what will he inherit? He will inherit all things. And then what? I will be his God. So if you are not an overcomer, God is not your God and he shall be my son. So if you want to be the son of God, the daughter of God, the servant of God, you need to be an overcomer. If you are not an overcomer, you give in to sin, you give in to the devil, you give in to his plots, you give in to his schemes. You are not an overcomer, then therefore God is not your God. Because everybody goes through something in life. But God is asking you to become an overcomer. So that means you don't let the situation, the problem, the discouragement overcome you, but you overcome it. That's why when Cain uh, um, was jealous or he was not happy because God rejected his offering and accepted the offering of Abel, what did Cain do? Cain was jealous. Cain was mad. And Cain let sin overcame him. So because sin overcame him, because sin started working in your mind. So because sin overcame him, what did he do? He killed his brother Abel. So that's why God said, do not let it overcome you. He said, he, to, he told him to take control, to overcome. What is the definition of overcome? What is overcoming? is to succeed in dealing, in dealing with a problem or difficulty. To overcome is to prevail over, to have control over, to bring under control. It's like you taming a, a, a donkey or a dog. You put a brittle in the donkey's mouth. You tame a, a, an animal. It's to master over. You don't let it master over you. Like some people, they cannot go on a diet. They let the sugar addiction overcome them. They let the pork fry rice overcome them. They let the nice cookies and ice cream and, and all those goody stuff, sugary stuff overcome them. So that's why they cannot be on a diet because they let the, the food overcome them. They have no control over their, their taste buds. So God wants us to become an overcomer. Overcomer means you will become an overcomer over all things. Anything that you want to achieve in life, you will be able to do it. You will be able to do it because you are an overcomer. So when we are men of God, daughters of God, servants of God, we're supposed to be overcomers. We're supposed to be fighters because Christianity is a life of struggle. Christianity is a life... Is the life of battling. The minute that you call yourself a Christian, you say you believe in God, you enter into a battle that will follow you until the day Jesus Christ comes back. So if you are not an overcomer, you're not a fighter, you give in to the devil's schemes, the devil's lies, he's going to overcome you and bring you to hell. That's why God called us to be overcomers. Commerce. So when you are an overcomer, you will master your situation. You will master your problem. You will defeat the situation. You have triumph. That's why he say we have more than conquerors. Amen. You overpower your, your situation. You conquer over the devil. You conquer over the demons. You conquer. That's why Jesus conquered death. He said, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, 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 grave. Where is thy victory? Amen? Because Jesus conquered over the devil. 
That's why we need to use the name of Jesus Christ to defeat the devil. We need to use the blood of the land to fight the devil. We need to fight the devil in prayer, in supplication, in reading our words, in fasting, in, 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 in declaring and decreeing, in binding the enemy. That's why we are overcomers. Because Jesus Christ died and gave us the power to become overcomers. Amen. That's the reason why in Revelation 21, 7, it says, He that overcome shall inherit all things. So that means the devil is going to fight back. If you are a Christian, you will have a, a, a retaliation from the devil. He's going to throw punches too. But what you going to do? Are you going to duck down? Are you going to play uh, uh, um, only defense but not offense? That's why you have to throw a punch back to the devil. You don't stay down. God understands that sometimes we can be down. But are you going to stay down or are you going to fight back with the scriptures? That's when you're going to know how strong you are. That's how you're going to know who you are. That's how you're going to know if you are there yet. Because the devil is not playing. He is coming to destroy, to kill, and to steal. And if you let him, it's your problem because God gave us the authority and the power to walk over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means fear us. That's why he said, he that overcome shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Are you an overcomer? God did not call us to be wimps and be like a chicken and be like a, a sissy and to be like a coward and to be timid. God called us to be overcoming. He said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you will have peace, but in this world you will have tribulation. He wants us to overcome. And he said, don't worry because I have overcome the world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus was an overcomer. He did not give in to sin. He did not give in to cussing. He did not give in to debauchery. He did not give in to whoremongering. He did not give in to fornication. He did not give in to lies. But he was an overcomer over the devil. That's why all of us must follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Are oh, you an overcomer like Jesus was? Or are you just going to give in to the devil and listen to his lies and schemes? We ought to be like our daddy. And Romans 12, 21 says that be not overcome of evil, but what? Overcome evil with good. We are supposed to be overcomers, defeat our situation, control our situation, tame our enemy, triumph over him, overpower Unto our enemy and prevail over every problem and situation in our life. And those are the people that are God's people. God's people are not late giving in to the devil. God's people are not doing giving in to sin. God's people fight until the end. That's why the apostle Paul said, fight the good fight of faith until the end. Hold on unto eternal life. Because the enemy is going to try to come in and take away your eternal life and your hands. 2 Peter 2.19, it says what? While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome. So when you overcome, you escape the pollution of this world. When you overcome, you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ to overcome. That's why he gave us his word so that we can become overcomers. We can have knowledge. We can have wisdom. Of what's going on. But if we entangle ourselves again. We go back to the world. Then what happened? We we fall into sin. So then the devil overcome you. Not you overcome the devil. Then it becomes worse for you. When you let the devil overcome you. Because he had delivered to us his holy commandment. That we know the truth. When you know the truth. Now you go back to the world. Then it becomes worse for you. That's why he called us to be overcomers. Amen. 1 John 2.13. 1 John 2.13 says what? I write unto you fathers because you have known him. That it is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Our job is to overcome the devil. To overcome sin. 
to cover, overcome ourselves, our weaknesses, to overcome this pollution, this corruption in this world. What he says, he say, I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because you have known the father. And he said, I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abide in you and you have overcome the wicked one. It's not about just believing. It's not about just going to church. But are you an overcomer? When situation comes, when problem comes, when your mind is going crazy, when you want to go back to the world, are you an overcomer? That's why he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all the things in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. So that means if you love the world, the Father does not know you. That's why he say, those that overcome, I am their God. If you're not an overcomer, God is not your God. I don't care how much you profess, you confess, you say you know God. But if you're not an overcomer, God does not know you. Because we have an unction, which is from the Holy One that knows all things. He said, the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that do the will of God abide forever. Little children, it is the last time you have heard Antichrist shall come. Even now are they Antichrist, many of them. Thereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, they were not of us, and if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. He said, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So why? Why do we overcome the world? Because even with our faith, we overcome the world. First John 4, 4 says what? He says, beloved, be not be not, uh, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone unto the world. Many false prophets. And he said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. See? Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. What makes you become an overcomer? Because of the spirit of God that is in us. That's why if someone doesn't have the spirit of God, they are none of his. And he said, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Are you an overcomer? May God bless you. May God keep you. Be an overcomer. Overcome your situation and your problems. And God will be your God. And you will inherit the kingdom of heaven.